Oh, yes. Literature has a task of uh, molding character. It has a task of glorifying courage, of um, uh, focusing ambition, of uh, directing, giving life direction. These are th the things that literature can do. And it, the biggest task of all which literature has is that it is the, the writer in whatever sense you take him is a teacher, is a man who explores new avenues of life and therefore he is a guide into these new avenues. Could you please explain how you feel about the negative literature and why do you think that English speaking Africans have difficulties in, under, in understanding this special kind of literature? Yes. Negritude has been defined as the black man's awareness of being black in a white dominated world. I always remember that definition and it came vividly to my mind when I went to the first world festival of Negro arts in Dakar in uh, 1964 I think and um, when you go to the to the um, French areas of influence you'll find that the the French are very down to earth and there is none of this uh, huge barrier between them in their provinces and the people with whom they are living. As a result of this uh, and probably as a sort of uh, attempt to identify uh, African culture, this cult of negritude has grown in the French areas of influence in that they felt that if they did not protest, if the black man did not, not quite protest, he did, if he didn't assert his own culture, it might tend to become assimilated or diffuse. Um, but in the British colonies of which Biafra used to be a part, the British remained very far away. They did not want to share uh, any cultural experiences uh, with us. They believed in importing England to wherever they went. So the, 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 the black people in those areas did not really feel the experience except in the administrative sense, so that their culture still remained intact. And um, when an, uh, a writer of English expression is discussing negritude with a writer of French expression, th there is this lack of real appreciation why negritude should be made into a cult, because it is absent in the areas of uh, uh, former uh, English influence. So my attitude to negritude is that it is a positive thing which is meant to assert and to arrest a culture which might uh, get lost if no positive attempt were made. Yes. Well, the cult of the African personality, I think, is political. Yes. Um, negritude is cultural. Although at some point the two might uh, interchange or become uh, one, or one might develop into the other. A lot of this, again, as I say, depends on your background. If you grew up in an agrarian community, um, you would necessarily have this knowledge. I don't happen to have this knowledge, so I can't sincerely write about it. And um, I have to do research to, to write about it. But a writer who has grown up in this way has it in his blood. Mm, the conflict between the old and the new is mainly in the area of values. The new African tends to uh, either disregard, ignore, or in, all in, 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 in some way adapt the old values to his own purpose. Um, the older uh, society valued truth and justice and age and experience and so on, the new African is usually so pressed for time in his search for his goal that at points he can uh, deaden his uh, mind to these values in the, in the attempt to, to reach his goal. Th these, I think, are the differences. Do you feel that the values of the old Africa can be transformed into the values of the new Africa, like if your countryman, Chino Chebe, for instance, has tried to do with his novels? Yes, I think it can be done in that um, it's a question of um, adaptability. Um, 
those who survive in life are those who are able to evolve with the changing times. I don't think the values will remain exactly as they are. I think that if they can evolve, if they can change and adapt themselves to the changing environment, they will greatly contribute what I regard as the African quality. You see, in every field, the African has something to contribute. And it isn't, it isn't merely aping uh, Western uh, European characteristics. On the international uh, scene, for instance, in international politics, the African can bring his own values to contribute. The moment he, he tries tangling up with a sort of big power showmanship, he's in the wrong train because he hasn't got that big power. But he has judgment, he has deliberation, he has a procedure on his side, and he has also culture. The, the African writer of today cannot escape it. After all, most of the big European writers wrote about their times, and our times are very troubled times. We cannot ignore what is happening all around us. Um, the writer has on his side one very big weapon, and that is truth. It doesn't matter on whose side that truth is. It is his responsibility to expose truth. There is a Yoruba writer whom we hear has been uh, harassed and put in prison. And those of, of us in Biafra feel he has been killed, although we have no evidence, uh, simply because he stands on the side of truth. And anyone who is involved in the creative arts can only see truth. A writer, uh, a painter, paints what he finds in a subject. And to him, that is truth. And it is the duty of a writer to mirror this truth. Is that a kind of action you feel that a writer should take? Should he go into the life, the political life of, of the nation, or should he stand above and just uh, note down, write about what he sees, or should he take a definite part, as you yourself do when you travel on behalf of Biafra and yes. work for the Ministry of Information? Yes. Well, writers are uh, governed by their temperaments. There are those of them who have this uh, urge to do. Uh, Hemingway was one such writer who believed in uh, living uh, right up to the uh, very height of life. He was a man of action. There are others who are timid and retiring and can influence from the uh, corners where they hide themselves. If a writer can lead as well as write, he will be a great benefit to his uh, country. Your last novel is about the war. Could you yes. please uh, give us uh, an outline, an explanation of what it is about? Yes, this novel is called um, Africa Chaos. It's not yet been published. The central character is, uh, again, uh, a young journalist who starts off by being a political correspondent of uh, the West African sensation in Lagos. When, he, uh, when the killings begin, he has to come to Biafra. And now he works as... Uh, a correspondent of the Consolidated Press Agency. Now, this life of his enables him to see the whole corruption, the coups and the counter-coups and the exodus and the war and the injustice practiced at peace conferences and the, uh, the puppeting going on throughout world organizations. And to realize that for Biafra, which is the, center, the location of the story, there can only be one justice, which is jungle justice. Might is right. If you are strong and you can be alive, then you can be called to the conference table to talk. And um, so this is how the novel runs. And it, the message the novel has is that unless African leaders can be honest to themselves and follow the dictates of their conscience rather than the manipulation of big powers, Nothing else will result in Africa but chaos. But Biafra today is uh, two years out of date in its development. When we come out into the world like this, we see new buildings and new cars and uh, new books. And uh, one uh, great uh, trait is to grab, grab, grab. We want to carry everything back to Biafra to show our brothers what is happening in the outside world. We are out of touch with books. We are out of touch with... Uh, uh, new modes of literature, of literary expression. Um, the, the new thing which is happening in Biafra today, the killing and the bombing and the starvation, 
has led to a whole new outburst of literary activity. It's difficult to believe, but this is true. We have uh, piles of poetry that high, written on uh, refugees and bombing and death. You can't experience these things without writing about them. So there is a new burst of literature coming from Biafra, even now during the war. And uh, the Biafran nation seems to have adopted uh, a poem written by Gabriel Okara as its theme, as its theme uh, in its protest. The novel is called, uh, the, the poem is called Leave Us Alone. The only prayer that Biafra has is, please leave us alone. We don't want your company. We don't want your oil. We don't want, we don't want your friendship, Nigeria. Please leave us alone. Let's develop at our pace. We are not going to compete. You've killed all of us. You've taken all the jobs. You have everything on your side, but please leave us alone.